Sprint qualifying for the Austrian Grand Prix is over and Max Verstappen in the Red Bull is on pole position. But what did we learn? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be doing a data analysis from sprint qualifying. If you enjoy the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get straight into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the top teams later on, so please do stick around for that. Yep, sprint qualifying is over and Verstappen takes pole position in what was a somewhat lifeless session, it has to be said. There was just something off with it in my opinion. There was not a lot of running as the teams and drivers were trying desperately to save as much life as possible in the tyres as it will likely be needing them again in the Grand Prix as the main race is expected to be a multi-stop race. And this is where the sprint format does struggle a little bit. They really could do with an extra set of medium tyres if they do want to run with this format in my opinion. Even so though, let's now look at how the times evolved as we look at the lap time set by Max Verstappen during the sprint qualifying. As you can see, he only set three push laps during the entire session, which doesn't really scream more track action versus a practice session in my opinion. But anyway, let's now compare his SQ1 lap to his SQ3 lap to see how the times compared. And when you look at these two laps, you can see that in the first lap in SQ1, Verstappen is much earlier on the brakes, showing how the mediums don't quite have the same levels of grip. In turn one and at turn three, Verstappen is very early on the brakes. But not only that, he also gets to power a lot sooner and better on the soft tires with the extra grip that those tires provide. Also at this section here, this is the high speed downforce section of the lap before the final few corners. And you can see that here that on the soft tires, Verstappen is approximately 18 kilometers per hour faster in SQ3, as the tires are giving Verstappen a lot more grip. Also through the final corners, Verstappen carries a maximum of 10 kilometers per hour more, showing that he can just push the limits of the Red Bull a lot better on those soft compound tire. This leads to a lap time gain of around one second, which around a lap that is only 64 seconds long is incredible. So we've seen how the times evolved during the session and how the times changed from the medium tires in SQ1 to the softs in SQ3, but let's now take a look at the top speeds that the teams were able to reach. So we can see who is looking fast and who is looking slow in a straight line right now. Well, so far there is one team that is looking mighty fast in a straight line, and that is Red Bull, at least with Sergio Perez, as he was able to reach a top speed of 322 kilometers per hour. The next fastest car in a straight line was the Aston Martin, which reached 320 kilometers per hour. They were looking fast in a straight line, but they were struggling with actual performance in the corners, as the team looked like they might have been lacking some downforce. The slowest car in a straight line, which is not really a massive surprise to anyone anymore, is the Alpine team and the Saubers, as they were only able to reach a top speed of 316 kilometers per hour. I think there will be some changes to setups after the sprint race, and we will see some different top speeds when it comes to Grand Prix qualifying, and I will be comparing them to see what the differences were between sprint qualifying and Grand Prix qualifying, so do stick around for when that video is released. In the midfield then, what team was looking good? Well, it has to be said that the top midfield team was Alpine as they got both cars through to SQ3 and Esteban Ocon is lining up in 8th place and Pierre Gasly is in 9th place for the sprint race. This is definitely proof that the Alpine team have made strides forward with developing their car, especially from where it was at the beginning of the year when they were massively overweight. And if they can build on this, then it could be a decent prospect for next year for a certain Spaniard driver if he does choose to join that team. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video so far, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about Mercedes. For Mercedes, it feels like they were more where they should be this weekend after what was a very strong Spanish Grand Prix. I said in my preview and predictions video that this weekend, they would likely drop back a little bit in terms of performance, and it seemed like that is what has happened, as George Russell is lining up in 4th place and Lewis Hamilton is 6th. 
Remember, though, they benefited from the fact that Leclerc was unable to set a lap at the end of sprint qualifying, otherwise it's likely they would have been an extra place down. Let's now compare then the times of George Russell to teammate Lewis Hamilton to see how Hamilton missed out against his teammate. And when you look at these two laps and look at the Delta Trace, it is clear where Lewis lost the time. At the very tight turn three, Lewis it looks like went very deep and he lost a bunch of time. During the live broadcast, we did see how he straddled the outside curb and he was stuck on there and that meant that he was not able to get to power as soon as George Russell. Because you can see here that when George Russell is accelerating, Hamilton is still only doing 68 kilometers per hour. And this error cost Lewis around two tenths of a second. And if he didn't make that mistake, then I think he would have actually beaten Russell today. You can see that going into the final couple of corners, for example, Hamilton does actually carry a little bit more speed. And you can see on the Delta, he actually starts to gain back the time that he lost. But that one mistake cost him dearly. In the sprint tomorrow, it will all be about learning for them and seeing what they can do over a stint as they will be looking to set themselves up for the main Grand Prix. For McLaren, it was a solid performance as it's P2 and P3 for Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri as they look to once again be the closest rivals to Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. I will be comparing the times of Norris to Verstappen a little bit later, so please do stick around for that. For now though, how does Norris compare to his teammates? Well, when you look at these laps, it's actually somewhat similar to what we just saw with Mercedes at turn 3. The damage is done at this one corner and Piastri loses a significant amount of time. He does claw back some of that in the high speed downforce parts of the lap, but then he loses the time in the last couple of corners. In the sprint race, I hope we see McLaren go on full attack against Red Bull. If not, then I can see them try to consolidate second and third place as they continue to try and close the gap to the mighty Ferrari team. And for Ferrari, it was a bit of a shocker once again, as Charles Leclerc couldn't set a lap time in SQ3 as his power unit switched off in the pit lane, which is not ideal when everyone was leaving it to the last possible second to actually try and set a lap time. They did say he hit anti-stall, but usually when you hit anti-stall, the power unit itself doesn't switch off, which is what happened in this instance. This means then that he is starting the sprint race down in 10th place. Teammate Sainz was able to at least set a lap time and he splits the two Mercedes cars, but he is half a second away from Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. But how did this happen? Well, let's look at the two laps. And when you look at these two laps, you can see that down the straights, Verstappen is already faster than Sainz, showing that the Red Bull is a faster car in a straight line. Also, at this section here, Verstappen carries 11 kilometers per hour more than Carlos Sainz, as Sainz scrubs off way too much speed. And then going through the final two corners, in the Ferrari, it just doesn't look as hooked up as the Red Bull. And all of this all together means that Carlos Sainz lost half a second to Max Verstappen. In the sprint race, Sainz will be looking to beat Mercedes and teammate Charles Leclerc will just be looking to keep his nose clean in order to compete in Grand Prix qualifying by not damaging his car. And finally, for Red Bull, it was another pole position for Verstappen, but teammate Perez is way down the order from where he should be. But then, how did Max Verstappen take pole position? Well, let's compare his lap to that of Lando Norris. Going down the pit straight, Verstappen has a straight line speed edge over the McLaren, which is what we do typically see. But going through turn one, Norris actually carries a little bit more speed. And this is the story of the first three braking zones. Verstappen is faster down the straight, but Norris is actually faster at the apex of the corner as he carries a little bit more speed. Then at the medium and high speed downforce section, Norris still carries a little bit more speed at the apex, but Verstappen is able to carry more maximum speed before hitting the brakes. Then through the final two corners, this is where the high speed strength of the Red Bull really comes into their own, as Verstappen carries more speed and uses that to secure sprint race pole position. In the sprint race, Verstappen will be looking to get a clean start and convert sprint pole into sprint race victory. If he gets off the line cleanly, 
that I don't expect McLaren to actually fight him. So with that in mind then, what are my top five predictions for the sprint race? Well, in P5, I'm gonna go for George Russell in the Mercedes. P4 will be Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. P3 will be Oscar Piastri. P2 will be Lando Norris. And yes, I expect Max Verstappen to win the sprint race. But those are my thoughts. The question is, what do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, please do let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.